Hey everybody, and welcome to this video series about Vitesse. So I'm Ben, and I'm gonna be your host throughout these next couple of videos. And in this series, I'm gonna be talking to you about Vitesse, what it is, and how you can scale your database with Vitesse. We're gonna walk through a bunch of stuff. So I'm gonna talk about some concepts in Vitesse, but I'm also gonna show you how to download, build, and install it, how to run some examples, how to get it spread out across multiple machines, how to even run it on Kubernetes, and how planet scale and Vitesse work together. And when you spin up a planet scale database, you're actually getting a Vitesse database under the hood. So this is gonna be a great video series. And if you are brand new to Vitesse, you probably wanna watch them all the way through in sequence. If you already have a little bit of exposure to Vitesse, you might jump around and just skip to the videos that you find most interesting. So welcome to this series. And in this video, I wanna talk mostly about some conceptual stuff of scaling databases and how you might reach a point where Vitesse is something that you really want to use. So let's jump into the drawing board and we'll draw some pictures to help illustrate what I'm talking about here. All right, so let's say that you are building a web application and you want it to be backed by a database. So I'm gonna go ahead and draw an app here and we'll make it just a little box. And of course, when you're building an application, you're gonna want this to be powered by a database. So let's say you're choosing MySQL, which is one of the world's most popular databases. And I'll draw again a box right here. So MySQL. Okay, so early on, this really simple architecture might be sufficient, right? Because you get a request to your app server, your app server makes a request to the database, fetches what it needs, returns that, and then can respond to your client. So this is a great setup for early on, but at some point you may start to need to scale your app server. So you might actually need multiple app servers either for different services or just multiple running the same code. So I'm gonna draw a few app servers here, right? App server, app server, and these could all connect to that same database when they need to query something. Okay. So at some point that MySQL server might start to get overwhelmed, right? There's so many requests coming in or there's so much data being stored on it that one server isn't really sufficient. So another thing that you can do at this step is you can do replication. So I'm just gonna draw two replicas because this is a common way of doing it, right? So another MySQL instance and then another MySQL instance down here. And when you do replication, generally what you're doing is you have one primary uh, node, and then the others are replicas of that. Now with these three servers, the big one in the middle, the primary, this one can handle write traffic and read traffic, whereas the other two can only handle read traffic, so select statements, right? And this is a common way of setting up replication where essentially those other ones can offload some of the read workload, right? Uh, but the right traffic can still, if, if you have a really, really busy server and a lot of traffic, can still be a bottleneck on that main primary server. So one thing that you can do is you continue to upsize this, right? Get more specs, more CPU, more RAM, and so on to allow that primary to handle more load. But eventually that can still be a bottleneck if you're talking about really big scale. So what do you start doing once you've reached that point? Well, this is where sharding comes into play and is often the next step in scaling after you've tried some of these other options. So how does sharding work? Well, what you basically do is you start to spread your database out across multiple servers. So I'm gonna erase a couple of the components on the screen here in favor of, uh, we'll see what it looks like doing some kind of sharding, right? So we'll get rid of these arrows here. And okay, so we've still got those app servers, but let's say now we are deciding to spread our data out across two servers. So some simple vertical sharding is what we're gonna try here. So I'm gonna create two instances of MySQL, two boxes here. And on these, this is where we want to put all of our data. What you might do in this instance is say, okay, let's say your database originally had 20 tables in it you could say, well, I'm gonna put 10 of my tables over on one of these databases and 10 on the other. So that way, assuming those tables are approximately equivalent in size, right, you've basically cut your data in half and spread it out across two servers. And then if you want to, even these spread out ones can have replicas, right? So I'll just draw small boxes for these, but each one with the 10 tables can have some replicas to handle some of the select statements. 
So your app servers will then need to have logic to say, okay, if I need something, let's say from the customer table that lives over on this server. But then if I need something from the product table for the application, I need to go route that to a different MySQL server. And this can add complexity to your applications because at this point, right now they have to have extra logic in them to decide which server to send traffic to. So this is a really great way to scale, but it does add complexity to your application layer. And another way to do sharding here is what we call horizontal sharding, which is actually having some kind of function that decides which rows go where. So even from a single table, like let's say your product table, you could say, okay, all products with IDs from zero to a million go on this server right here. And all products with IDs one million to two million go on this server right here, right? So it's using a different technique to spread the rows out across your database. Now, this still adds complexity to the application layer. So what can we do to simplify this? And this is where Vitesse comes into play. Now, I'm gonna erase yet again so we can kind of redraw this picture using uh, some of the great features that Vitesse has. And for now, we're just talking about this conceptually, but we will get into actually seeing how this really works because I'm gonna show you a bunch of stuff about Vitesse in this video series. So in Vitesse, the way that you would set this up is I'll again be very simple with just two MySQL servers, but Vitesse supports you know, hundreds or even thousands of MySQL servers at a time, so it's very scalable. So two MySQL instances, and let's say we have a similar situation where I wanna spread my table data out between these two instances. What Vitesse does is it has an attached uh, process for each of these called a VT tablet. And then I'm gonna add one down here. So VT tablet. And then what your application servers would actually connect to is a special component called a VT gate. And what this allows it to do is an application will connect to a VT gate and the VT gate knows about these other two MySQL instances and it communicates via this VT tablet process. And what it can do is it can allow your application servers to act like they're just connecting to a single database, right? It just connects to this database. It can look at the different schemas within that, ask for different data. And the VT gate will handle figuring out how to route to the correct location. So for instance, let's say this app server wanted to make a request and say, okay, I want data from the customer table. So the VT gate would know, okay, the customer data lives over here. So I'm gonna route the data there and then send it back. But then if this other server came in and said, well, I want something from the product table, it would know, oh, the product data lives over here. So I'll send that back to you and you can go route that back and respond to your client request. So this is a very simplified picture of what's going on with Vitesse, right? There's actually a lot more components going on and a bunch of cool features that it allows you to do. It can do vertical sharding and horizontal sharding, and it can do automatic failover and all these cool features that you want in a scalable, highly available system. Uh, and on top of this, this is showing a very small picture, right? In reality, you can scale up to thousands of nodes, right? There's giant companies that use Vitesse, right? Companies like GitHub and Slack that have many terabytes of data uh, can scale very nicely with this kind of uh, software system. So this is the stuff that we're gonna be talking about in this video series. And in case you didn't know already, what PlanetScale uses is we actually use Vitesse under the hood. So by the time you go through this video series, you'll have a much better understanding of what Vitesse is, how it works, and that it takes a lot of work if you wanna set up a Vitesse cluster yourself. So if you want an easier methodology, you can go to PlanetScale and with a couple clicks of a button, you can have your Vitesse cluster spun up. So that's what we're gonna be doing in this video series. And I would encourage you to stay tuned for the next few because we're gonna go through a bunch of the cool nitty gritty details and see how Vitesse really works under the hood. So take care, I will see you in the next video. Thanks for being here for this one.